I'm oddly excited about this week's tutorial, and I think it's because it's a solution to a problem that I've had myself, and it's a difficult problem, but the solution, when implemented this particular way, uh, is pretty elegant, and, and it's pretty much a fail-safe way to fix the problem. And the, the problem that I'm describing is when you're dealing with a brand who has colors, in this case brand orange, uh, a lot of the time in the hero area or the top uh, content area of the home page, you want to use that color. You want to saturate that color. You want to drive the brand's colors on the page in, in a very prominent way. And when you do so, uh, and you keep the brand logo in its color, uh, you usually end up with a, a background for your header bar that's white or gray or some color other than the logo color, otherwise you wouldn't be able to see the logo. And you want the first impression of the logo to be in its respective colors, so in this case, orange. Now the problem that that creates is as we scroll down and go beyond the hero area, we run into more gray. And when we have gray on gray, now our bar isn't really a bar anymore. Now we just have floating letters that sort of crop the content. It just doesn't look quite right. It doesn't look as good as it did up here. So my proposed solution, which I discovered on another web page uh, and tried to pull off in Adobe Muse, is to have the navigation bar and its content change color when you reach that area. So not only am I changing the color, but I'm driving the orange for this brand orange. The logo and the navigation have changed to white from their original colors, uh, but I am driving the orange into the design uh, more prominently than if I just had the logo in the color. So it's an easy way out of the original problem. So I'm going to show you guys how I pulled this off in Adobe Muse. And here's my finished page. Let's go to the work in progress. So what I have here at the top is I have a gray rectangle and that gray rectangle, very light gray, practically white. And that light gray rectangle is 100% page width, meaning it's stretched all the way to the edge. And when I preview in the browser, you can see that it does go the full width of the page. Uh, and when I go back in here, I've got a text box and another text box with my navigation and my logo. Uh, now, if your logo is uh, a bitmap image, if it's if it's a graphic, uh, you will want the color version of the logo, and you'll want a white only version of the logo to do this. Uh, in my case, because it's text, I can change the color on the fly. Um, but if you are working with a graphic, then make sure you have both versions of that graphic. Um, if you're like me and you've just got a text box, then this next part is even easier for you. I'm going to select all three of these objects that make up my navigation. And uh, that's by holding the shift key on your keyboard when clicking each object, in case you're not familiar with that. And then I'm going to do a little trick where I hold the alt or option key and drag those elements down to duplicate them. Uh, now the placement is arbitrary. I'm not trying to place these in any direct specific place. I'm, I'm just kind of making a second copy just to have it on the screen. And now what I would recommend doing is taking the top one of the two and making that your alternate version. Uh, because when you option drag something, it becomes the top layer. So this one down here is the top layer. Um, and for what we're about to do, you want the top layer to be the regular version and you want the layer below it to be the uh, white and colored version. So uh, I'm going to go and use this top one here, which is the rear layer at this point. Uh, and that doesn't matter so much yet, but it will in a moment. Um, and I'm going to set my rectangle in the background to that orange color, which I just used this orange color here. And I'm going to click on my text box and pull up the text panel on the right hand side. And I'm going to switch my text to white. And then I'm going to click my navigation text box and change that text to white as well. So now I've got my alternate version of that navigation. And now that I have that created, I can grab these elements that I have option dragged down. And I'm just going to do a regular drag up to put these back into place. So now we've set the stage. We've created the regular version of the navigation on top of the alternate version. But we need the regular version to disappear to make the alternate version show up. And that has to happen at the right time on the page. So I'm going to scroll down and we need to figure out where the orange ends and where the gray begins. It looks like that's happening at about the 900 pixel mark on my ruler. Uh, everyone's will be different, but you're going to want to look and see at what mark on the ruler uh, this ends. Uh, if you want to be really, really precise, you can select uh, your colored block and you can go over to transform 
And by taking the y position of this box, which is 76, and adding the height of the box, you will get the exact, exact position. So in my case, it's probably, um, it looks like it's 907 if I wanted to do the math. Uh, but I'm not going to bother being that precise. You may, though, if you so choose. So now that I know I'm around 900 pixels, uh, I also need to take into account the height of this bar, which is about 80. So I'm going to do 900 minus 80, and that gives me 820. So it's at the 820 pixel mark on the page that I want this to change colors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and select all three of these elements again. And I'm going to find my scroll effects panel on the right hand side. And I'm going to open up scroll effects. And the scroll effects are broken into four tabs. And you want to navigate to the second of those four tabs, which is the opacity tab. And you want to turn on opacity from the little check mark next to the word opacity. And now we need to decide what's going to happen to the opacity of these three objects. I want it to start at 100%, not at 0%. I want it to start visible. I want it to continue being visible until the key position. So I'm going to have 100, 100. It's going to stay at 100 up until the key position. Then it's going to drop to 0. So that way we can see the uh, alternate version of the navigation behind it. Uh, so I need to decide when these things happen. And the way you want to do that is you want to start by typing in uh, what happens at the first position, what happens at the second position, what happens at the third. Really all that matters is that the second position where it goes from 100 and the third position where it finishes going to zero are the right numbers. Uh, the first box really doesn't matter very much. So in this second box here where we say where it stops being 100% opacity, that's where that number that we just figured out comes in. So in my case it was 820 about, 820 and I'll hit return, and that gives me 820 twice up here. Again, the top number doesn't matter so much. All that matters is that it's at 100% opacity. Uh, the middle number needs to be that key position that matched the position on your page where you go from the first section of content to the second section of content. Uh, and then the third number down here, the third key position, that is where it finishes going to 0%, which means uh, where your alternate uh, navigation finishes appearing as this navigation disappears. So the larger the difference between this number in the middle and this number at the bottom, the more gradually it'll fade in. I have about a 40 pixel gap here. I have exactly a 40 pixel gap here. So as the viewer scrolls 40 pixels, it goes from being this navigation to being the alternate navigation. Now if I made this 960 pixels, uh, the, the viewer would have to scroll 140 pixels for that fade to take place. That fade would take place over 140 pixels, which I think is a bit too much. So I'm just going to stick with a 40 pixel gap. Leave it at 860, and I'll preview this in the browser. And now as I scroll, there it goes. It starts to transition right here, and then it finishes transitioning right here. Uh, so as I scroll, if I scroll at a normal speed, it goes pretty quick. Uh, it, it's pretty sudden, which is cool. I mean, really, you don't need people to be sitting there and going like this, like I am right now. Um, but it is important that all of these navigation elements are pinned if you want them to stay at the top like mine. If you've never done a pinned navigation at the top, uh, just so you guys know, you select each of these navigation elements, and uh, on the toolbar at the top, you can pin them to top center. Uh, if you are thinking, why don't I just group these elements together, uh, the problem with that is if you group these elements together, uh, when you preview it in the browser, you'll find that it's no longer 100% page width. Uh, I don't know why that is, but if you group elements, it does not allow you to make them 100% page width. So just a heads up, you have to shift click on these things and cannot group them together if you want it to be 100% page width. Um, if you guys are unfamiliar with some of the things that I talked about, you may want to reference some of my earlier tutorials about pinned navigation, uh, or maybe even just some of the key position uh, tutorials or scroll motion tutorials. But if you guys are following me on this, I hope you're excited about it. I think it's a really great solution. And uh, if you have not subscribed already, please subscribe because I will have more stuff, as you guys probably know if you've watched a few of these. I will have more cool stuff coming soon.